hello, Dojo Nation. How you doing on this fine day? The mustache is getting happier as we move along. This week's um, Coffee Talks Coffee and a Tip is brought to you by my good friend Scott Doloff and Rainmaker. And so one of the things I'd like to share with you today is the concept of save the baby. Have you ever given someone a task, a team member, or even hired somebody to do something for you, and they don't get the job done? God, that's frustrating, ain't it? And it's very frustrating when some, something doesn't get done that we wanted to have done, right? So I had came up with this concept of save the baby. Here's the analogy. The analogy is, what if you uh, were at a swimming pool, you had your baby, and you allowed your baby to go swimming, and the baby got in trouble? You would expect the lifeguard to dive into the water and save your baby. Save the baby, correct? What you wouldn't expect from the lifeguard was for them to say, the water was too cold. It was too windy out. I didn't have enough time. All you care about is saving the baby, correct? There's only one answer. You either save the baby or you didn't save the baby. I found that when I work with certain type jobs, task type jobs, or I hire something out, I like to share that concept with them. And then, as we're discussing the job, the simple question is, did you save the baby? Now, does it always work? No, but it works more times than just screaming and hollering and jumping up and down. And got a question for you. We're getting closer and closer. Some people are already opening up. Have you um, ordered your grand opening banner? You should have some kind of banner in your school welcoming your students back, tell them, telling them how much you miss them and how excited you are to get back in class. You should have a picture of that and be posting out on your Facebook and letting everybody know that you're back open again. And speaking of video views, you know, there's not a lot of new business going on out there. There's some anecdotal stuff that's going on, but people are still in their homes and they're still on their computers. Now's a great time to, sh to share videos on your Facebook marketing. You can just hit video views as you promote things. And uh, they're really cheap. If you do it right, you can get them down to a penny a piece. And just let the people in your trade market, your 12 mile, 12 minute, I'm sorry, 12 to 15 minute drive time, um, know that you're still in business, know that you're still um, an asset to your community and some of the stuff you're doing to be an asset in, in the community. If you really wanna do it right, you want to make sure you have your pixels in there, then you'll know everybody that watched the videos. And when you open up, you can start blasting ads to them works and this week's video from cause talks man oh man oh man min wilson she's uh two lays uh brother if you don't know him he's got the uh the uh encourage martial arts schools and and uh, i think the licensing and franchise program goes with it she did the most fantastic presentation at cause talks last year it's amazing you're going to want to stay on the end of this and watch it. It's really something to see, and it's it gives you some real clarity as to probably what's been going on the last couple months and what's coming ahead as we go on. Well worth your time, and we thank her so much for uh, being there last year. Great time. All right, folks, let's have another great week. Let's take another step forward. We're going to have this thing open in no time. Randy Reed over and out. guys welcome back we are excited to kick off again with our third speaker of the day this is Min Wilson she's in Northern Virginia with Encourage Martial Arts and for those of you that are just tuning in I again want to express how awesome that her presentation is going to be so she went in the last two years from two schools to 17 five of those are internally uh, owned the other 12 are with licensees they're absolutely crushing it and she is going to share what you guys need to do to exponentially go to the next level in your business and in your life. So without any further ado, 
please give a huge Cause Talks warm welcome. Put your hands together for Min Wilson. That's it. That's my presentation. Thank you. I'll see you guys at the bar if you guys have any questions. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dwayne, um, and thank you, Randy, for having me. This is actually my first time at Cause Talks. So I have been secretly, you know, stalking Cause Talks on Facebook, on social media, the last five years. And every year I see this wonderful group of people in this beautiful place, blue beaches, palm trees, great weather, drinking blue margaritas, and I'm like, sitting at home having major FOMO. Like, I want to be there. So I am so excited that this year I finally get to be in Kazuma with you guys. And um, I'm just here to share a little bit more about Encourage, Encourage Systems. Uh, we, I love Encourage. I've been working with Two. Two is my partner. A lot of you guys know him. He's the My Studio guy. He's my partner and he's also my brother. But keep that on the down low. I don't like to tell many people that, right? Um, and we've been working together for a long time. Uh, so a little bit more about Encourage Martial Arts. We are located, uh, we have five locations in Northern Virginia. And all five locations run martial arts classes, an after school program, and a summer camp program. We do about 3.5 million annually, uh, averaging about 700,000 per location. So that's pre pretty cool. And the crazy thing about that is, like Dwayne said, it was actually a year and eight months ago. A year and eight months ago, we were still only at two locations. And the people running that two, those two locations, right here, okay? Two was running one location, I was running another location, and we said, hey, we want to grow bigger. How are we gonna do this? How are we gonna get laser focused so that we can go from having two schools that we work full time in to we don't work full time in those schools anymore. Now we work on the business, and also we had just a group of amazing, amazing instructors that were, they wanted more responsibility. They were either gonna stay with us, or they were gonna go off and um, open up their own school. So we said, how can we make this work, right? So here's the timeline. January 2017, this was when Encourage became Encourage. Before this date, we were operating um, under a different name. So we took the risk and we said, hey, we want to do our own thing. We want to kind of, we have this vision, we want to put it together. So we're going to do our own thing. And we rebranded to Encourage Martial Arts. Two locations. June 2018, we opened up our third location. August 2019, we bought a fourth location. September 2019, we're like, hey, that was so fun in August. Let's buy another location. So then we bought a fifth location. And then in November, we signed on 12 licensees to our program. Um, and that was November 2019, so that was three months ago. So here, I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about how we made that jump. And I like to be really interactive um, with audience participation, so I hope that you guys are ready. I brought some props, just because I know, you know, we're in Cozumel, so we need some beach balls, right? Uh, <laughs> So, um, let me get Andrew, since you're sitting right here. Andrew, come on up. Andrew, can you uh, go ahead and grab a ball and read, hold it up and read it out to everybody what's on that ball? Staff development. Oh, okay. we thought about that. Nice. Staff, yeah. Now he's going to give a speech on it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> can I, like, No, you're going to stand right here and hold it. You're my model. Okay, staff development. Clayton, come on up, please. Yeah. Grab another one. Grab another ball? Yes. <laughs> Daily operations. Daily operations. Okay. And then, sir? What is Doug. your name, sir? I'm Doug. Doug. Doug is like the best student. He's sitting here and he's like taking notes. So, Doug, come on up and grab a ball. Yeah. Join us. Product development. Product development. Okay. And MJ, come on up. Form of the average Joe's. There we go. Putting together a dog monkey. Student, Student retention. So I need more people to just keep on coming up. Sir, come on up, grab a ball. Come on up. Yes. Yeah, get up here. What's on yours? Recruiting. Recruiting. 
I want Andrew. Free beer. Free beer. Really? Facility maintenance. Sales. 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 Come on up, guys. Mark. Marketing. Yes. I want some ladies. Let's go, ladies. There you go. Pay bills and payroll. Pay bills and payroll. Oh. Customer service, vacation, yes, vacation, and then there's one more. I need one more person to come on up. <laughs> Dwayne, come up. Lead generation. Lead generation. Okay, so everybody, hold up your your uh, your beach balls. Yeah, how about this? Everybody, hold up your beach balls. Um, so this. This is 12 things that we as business owners have to do. Am I right? Okay, so tell me, of these 12 things, what is the most important? Vacation. Vacation? <laughs> vacation? Who said Hannah wins. Okay, so let's say vacation. Or right, Hannah, you're gonna stay back there. What, what else besides vacation? Staff training, staff development. Okay, who has that ball? Andrew, come on out to the middle. Okay, so, and there's no wrong answers. No wrong answers. So staff development, staff training. What's next? Customer service. Customer service. Mel, give Andrew the, that ball. So Andrew, you're holding that too. I went to vacation. <laughs> and then Mel's going to sit down. Okay. Now what's third? Facility maintenance. Facility maintenance, okay? I see what's happening here. <laughs> okay, what else? Lead, lead, lead pretty generation's pretty important. <laughs> give, it, give it to him, yeah. <laughs> All right. Congratulations, Andrew. What's <laughs> after that? <laughs> Student retention. Okay, come on, Andrew. What else? <laughs> Daily operations. Bring it over. <laughs> Sales. Sales. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. What ball did you, wait a minute, freeze. What ball did he just drop? Hold on. I delegated. He dropped the ball. He dropped student retention. Okay? So now everybody try to just give the balls to Andrew. Hold the vacation ball. Everybody give Andrew your ball. Beach ball. Beach ball. Come on, Andrew. There you go. Wow. Look at him. This is pretty impressive. Okay. Well, first, we need to give him a big hand because this is pretty impressive. Okay? here represents every small business owner ever, right? Um, now, Andrew wants to take a vacation, right? And Andrew, here's, thank you, Hannah. This is Andrew's vacation ball. Um, so, Andrew, what's going to happen to all these balls for you to pick up the vacation ball? <laughs> That's pretty good. And so now, um, to go ahead and get the other 20 balls for me. Okay. So, Andrew, this is us, right? All of these things, and I could add on 20, 30 more things that we have to do as business owners on a daily. Am I right? So what's gonna happen? These balls are gonna start dropping. I'm telling you, that vacation ball's gonna drop first, okay? That's going. And so, what happens is we, once we start dropping balls, what happens? Our business, right? We're getting stressed. Balls are starting to drop because Really? <laughs> Pretty good. Really, we only have so much time in the day. Thank you. Everybody give Andrew a big I wanted to use the beach balls as just a kind of to give something tangible of how a business owner might feel um, on a day-to-day. -day. Has anybody felt like this? Where there's just so much to do and the list is never ending? Yeah, I was there. So this was our challenge and we said, what are we going to do about it? How are we going to set our team up for success, right? There's a great book, it's called The E-Myth. Anybody, has anybody read The E-Myth? Awesome book. So here's the stats from that book. 40% of small businesses fail in the first year. So that means 10 of us, if we open up a martial arts school, only six is going to still be there after that first year. Of those that survive the first year, 80% will fail within the next five years. So let's say we have 10, six make it past the first year. That means at year six, only about 1.2 are left. That's that stat. 
okay? So how do we set up our team for success? If we're looking to grow, if you're sitting here and you're looking to grow from one location to two, or just to, if you're just looking to get out of your business for a vacation, we gotta put these systems in place. We have to, as Mel said, have a vision and implement it. Let me show you how we did that. So the first thing we did was you, we looked at all those balls and we said, what can we take off? What can we do? What can we develop? What can we do to take that off of our instructors? And we went to our instructors, went to our main guys and we said, what do you like? What, what is it about your job that you like to do? So, um, Mel. Mel. Hi. <laughs> what is it about being an instructor that you like? Connecting with students. Okay, she said connecting with students. How about you, sir? Uh, the same. Same, connecting with students. Um, Andrew. What do you like? Seeing their progress. Seeing their progress. Okay, so the answers we got from our instructors were exactly that. Nobody said strategy. Nobody said data. <laughs> Nobody said any of those things. They said connecting with kids, teaching martial arts classes, making an impact in the community, having fun. So we said, dang, these guys are really good at this. And if we could just take everything else off of their plate, how good is our school going to be and how fast can we grow? Can we take someone who's six months into our company and put them at a new school? Yes, we can and yes, we did. Can we take someone who was had no martial arts experience, was a yoga instructor, okay, a yoga, loves teaching and put her as a partner at a school? Yes, we can. We started with data. So this is something too is amazing at and he has brought this to our company. Every decision we make, we start with data. So we are data driven when we make any decision, when we um, make any moves, right? So I wanna show you some data, cause you know, it's summer, summer camp is coming and everyone's like, ah, if you run a summer camp, that's how we usually feel. Let me give you some data on our current summer camp. This is our Burke location. So if you look, this is, we have data even beyond 2017. But look right now at February 2020. They have sold 1,155 weeks of camp. They only have about 40 more weeks to sell until they're completely sold out. Okay, so this is the data, the type of data that we capture and um, create for our studios. From that data, we can make good business decisions. So we have five locations that are in Northern Virginia, right? I'm not, we don't price them at $199 a week for camp for every location. Why? Because we have data that we work from and we know that, hey, our Burke location is selling out. They've sold out for the last three years. So the supply and demand rule. The supply is limited there and the demand is high. So what do we do with the prices at our Burke location? Smart guy, Stefan Lee. We're pricing it higher. Our Lansdowne location, it's the last, the fifth location you see there. They, we just bought them in September. That is a small school that we're still growing. So you can see our Burke location selling at 289 a week. And this was back in October, they're at 345 now. But our Lansdowne in October was selling 175 because we had room to grow and we needed to grow that program. This is our live, um, our live My Studio event right now for our Burke location. You can see 1,155 weeks of camp sold. We've brought in already for summer camp for this summer at that location, 140, a little over $140,000, and $200,000 worth of billing is going to come in still um, over the months of May, June, and July. So make sure you guys are very data driven. Start with that. If you don't have a way of capturing your data, my studio is a great way to do that. Um, but we, so that's how, what we programmed it for. But we also have our internal sheets, so then you can make really good business decisions. Um, we create all the flyers for our team, every single flyer for every single promotion for every single event. We do that at our support office, right? Our guys don't have time. They don't have the time or the bandwidth, we'd like to say, to run daily operations connect with students, follow up on we miss you calls, get belts out, get tips out, and then also think about making a flyer, making an event, and coming up with the operational plans. So we do all that. So these are the, some sample flyers we create. This again is in regards to our summer camp program. So 
We make all of that for every single one of our locations. Um, <laughs> and beyond that, we also make the operational plans. So in our guys, when they come into the school, when we partner with them, or when we send them out because they're ready, everything's done and all they're doing is executing. So everybody say that with me. Execution. Execution. Imagine how good it would be for your instructor if the only thing they had to do was execute the plans you made and they do it well. Will you grow your business? Absolutely. So we talk about our product a lot, right? We talk about that execution. We take out all the other stuff. And if you look, this is our summer camp plans. So you can see every single room is listed up there. The time frame. This grid shows me where, what team member is going to be there, what kid is going to be there, what they're doing at that time, and when they're rotating. So there's no questions. They're not coming to ask me because it's all laid out for them. So organize, pre-plan, and then here's some samples of events we do. So in December, we, of course, did the Grinchmas event, and that's the flyer we created. It's beyond just creating a, a flyer, we go and we set up their My Studio. Okay, my studio event for those of you guys who use it. And then we also create the operational plans. So if you take a look over here, you see those plans. They know exactly what they're doing with the kids, what game they're playing, what craft they're doing, and the items needed. They just click on that and it's linked right to those items for them to buy it. So again, try to make it as easy as possible. We create monthly themes. So December again was our uh, Grinch, How the Grinch Stole Christmas theme. If you walk into any one of our five locations, the lobby will look the same with the same decorations. The Grinch is up. If you look at our classes, if you go and you view our classes from one location to the other, they're running and executing the same drill, the same mat chat, so consistent throughout everything. Okay, so that's um, that's a little bit more about Encourage Systems and kind of the what we've been doing. I'm really excited. I have, this is, I've never, uh, this is my first time in Cosmo. I've never spoken and it's so nice to get to connect and meet you all. We're excited to kind of get the Encourage Systems side going and our name out there. You, uh, you saw in November we signed up 10, 10 licensee and we had an operational summit for my studio at our locations. And like three days before that, two and I were sitting down having a conversation. We're saying, dude, every month we are building out these events. We're building out, um, you know, this marketing plan. We're building out all of this for our team. And it's the data showing it's working. And we said, what if we just did released it? What if we sign people on and they get everything that we create live that our locations get? We, because we know that if one martial arts school does well, it elevates the entire industry, right? Just like what Mel said, give back, right? So we said, why not share? Why not have this? Why not help others? Um, and it would be great if someone got to 10 schools, 17 schools, and beat us because that would light a fire under us, and it would just make us overall better. So I wanted to share it with you. I don't want to go over time. Um, I will be at the bars. I would love to connect and talk to you guys a little bit more. I have never had a blue margarita, so I'm excited for that. Um, and you remind me when I get Kirsten's getting me one. And that's my limit because I'm a lightweight, so don't nobody get me another one. But thank you so much, and I look forward to connecting with you guys more.